Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cabwell after Mikey's uh, really rather lovely commentary. We thank him for that. We are lining up for the uh, beginning. Or not lining up, we're just waiting to go down to the holding bay for the second or the first of the day, the specials class. Oh, the lovely Mr. Tatton going past. Oh, get out of the bloody way, really, but uh, let's just walk past them. Hi, Stuart. Steve going backwards, that's not something you see very often. Right, unfortunately I've left my glasses back there, which can make life a bit difficult, but... Darren Keneally, always in charge at the moment, but we'll see. Hopefully we'll get a replay of uh, what happened in the first uh, race from this morning, technically yesterday's race, when we uh, had John the Greek on the PK, uh, Justin Bryce on his aero, and uh, Darren on his group four. Justin and Darren, they're sitting there chin wagging. Good friends like uh, most of the people in the paddock. There's no real uh, antipathy between us. We might needle and uh, joke a little bit now and again, but uh, we all want the best of each other. Walk round. Old Bob West giving Greta Thunberg a bit of a heart attack there. The uh, only two Vespers in the race, Harry Smith on the team stat on the Stanford Scooter Centre machine, and John on the Hornet Racing. Expect good things from both of you. Mike wanted something on the off, off my uh, crib sheet. Mikey Bonnet there, looking to. Uh, it wasn't Justin, of course, was it? I'm sorry, it was Mikey and uh, uh, Darren who uh, were fighting for the lead. How remiss of me. James McNally had a little time in the uh, back of the van earlier on, but seems to have recovered and got it sorted out. Martin from Chisel Speed, of course, looking after those boys. Paul Fitzgerald there, Justin Oplin. Justin, uh, I think this is his first full meeting on the uh, new Group 6. Very tidy looking machine. Uh, Chris does a service to this engine, I understand. Beautifully prepared and lovely. I hope he stays that way. Oh, the pool of two strokes smoking. A lovely thing. And they're out for uh, the go up, warm up for the first. Let's watch them go out, then I'll walk up to the grandstand. Hopefully Jason Material has a little bit more luck this time, as does uh, Justin Bryce after his breakdowns, or both of them breaking down. Right, we'll walk over to the, uh, let's see if we can walk through the smoke, and walk over to the grandstand. Uh, hopefully they won't hold us forever like they did at the uh, beginning of the, the uh, standards race, as uh, the, one of the, uh, collect the collection van was still on circuit and they held us down at the uh, start for a long time which makes you feel really sorry for the guys on group 4 Lambrettas as uh, they are not keen in the least at uh, being held stationary they need to go have some movement to uh, keep themselves cool um, and they just tend to get boggier and boggier and more and more unhappy as they uh, wait on the line so realistically you need to get them out there fairly quickly Hello, John from Jar Speed. <laughs> Be watching his man, Jason. Oh. 
Darren Keneally, number 26. Mike Bonnet is number 16. Uh, I'll stay here, I think, because I don't want to be able to... Uh, I'll be blocking people off if I stand anywhere else. Right. Can't quite see the guy behind. Uh, 51. Anyway, uh, they're off. They'll be around past you. OK, and they're off for the sighting lap. Uh, yeah, it's number four. And I'm looking at that. Uh, I've spoken about it before, but you'll see some people treating the warm-up lap as just that, a sort of gentle warm-up lap, and you'll see others uh, really do a race start, uh, put the hammer down, really treat it like the first lap of a race, just to get some heat into the tyres and make sure them, they themselves are dialled in. Um, if you watch most of the front runners, that's what they're doing. Um, you'll see some people weaving around, trying to put, get uh, heat in the tyres, scrub them down a little bit. Uh, and again, some very hard braking, again, to put heat in the front tyre. Uh, no one wants cold tyres on the first lap. Unfortunately, given how long we get held, usually in the uh, holding bay and then out on the, uh, on the grid, tyre warmers are questionable usefulness. We, uh, sometimes we, the tyres can have cooled quite back down. Whether the core is still warm, I don't know. Um, I don't use them. Others do. Um, I'd rather spend a few hundred quid they cost on something to do with the engine, I think. Um, but hey, let's pan back out a little bit. Um, Darren Keneally coming through for the, uh, the, the start. The warm up. Steve Wright just going past there. John the Greek coming. No, that's Steve Keneally, sorry. Pete uh, Terry, Mike Bonnet. People coming through. I haven't seen John the Greek yet there. No, I haven't seen him. Oh dear. Oh, there he is. He was struggling a bit before the race with a flooding carb. Something's not happy there. Not happy at all there. Oh dear. I think the uh, carb's still flooding, which means it's been rich as hell look, until suddenly it comes in on the power. Uh, oh dear. Those Delorto, the big Delortos do seem to have a few problems with that sort of thing. We'll see. Hopefully, he won't have to push it back up the hill because that would be a pain. <laughs> So they're lining up for the start now. Just seeing behind the uh, the barrier. If I pan up a little bit, right down there. John hasn't. Ta he's taking up his position at the moment. John is uh, third. Whether he starts or not, I don't know. He's got his hand up. He put his hand up. It's still, I can still see smoke coming from the back of it. His uh, hand up was to apologise. Um, hopefully he'll be all right. He may be running with the fuel tap off at the moment until he gets going, and then at least he can use fuel fast enough, even if the carb's flooding. He's away. They're all away. OK, we've got uh, Steve Wright with a startlingly good... Uh, Mikey Bonnet was in fourth. Uh, Darren was in second. Well, how long that will last for, I don't know. Right, I'll zoom back out as we wait for him to come round. This is the boring bit, the first couple of laps where we get a big gap. Oh, maybe a little bit more in than that. There we go. Let's get them. Number two. Hear him go up down the, uh, we'll go down the back straight. Yeah, Steve Wright looked like he was on it for the first lap there, Ken. Uh, let's hope he continues. The more people fighting for the front, the better, the better it is. It looks sounds like Darren's uh, got himself in front, in which case that's possibly it. For, we'll see how it goes. If there's fights behind him, it will slow people behind him down and he'll get, get away. That looks to me like he's got away. Mikey Bonnet's second. 
Steve Wright. Uh, Justin. No, uh, John got some problems there. But they'll fight for it. Oh dear, Jason's pulled off. That's unfortunate. And it looked like one of the SRP boys had pulled off before then as well. Uh, I've missed who's going down the back. We've got Steve right there, Justin, John. So it looks like Darren Keneally's made a good advantage of the fact that there was a bit of a fight behind him and he's managed to uh, put a gap in which would be very difficult to uh, get back. At the top end there isn't much to separate them, even though John managed to get the fastest lap on the last race. Um, it was only by three or four tenths of a second and uh, you've got to pray that the guy in front of you makes a serious enough mistake that uh, you can then catch up and you don't make any mistakes yourself. If, he's, if you threw a net over the top five guys then uh, none of them are really cocking up. You know, you've got to be lucky to, uh, if they get a gap, to start being able to pull them back in. Uh, I would say he's possibly cornering a little bit faster than he was earlier and uh, uh, that gap hasn't really changed with the time they get back down to Mansell which is where they are now so staying very very similar but back in third place it is still Steve Wright and then I can see uh, John Titoglu is uh, next one along so uh, already can he, he's back to you so back to Rusty Lee out the box he's, uh Darren, a lovely style there. Mikey, the same though. Really in control, very light. Mikey will be a bit more wheelie prone over the mountain. Um, John dicing now with uh, Justin and Steve Wright. They go into the complex. Uh, Steve and Hammy. Hammy, of course, on the auto, the runner. Steve on the uh, group six bike. Uh, looks to me like Keith Terry. And Keith is on fire. I mean, that's a 4 e bike, and Keith is uh, Keith is doing well. All that in organising endurance has obviously uh, somehow rubbed off on him, and he goes faster when he's out. When I get to be retirement age, I want to be like him, or maybe like Bob West, a couple of years older than Keith. Harry going well. The bike sounds good. He had a problem in the uh, stock brace. He'd uh, broken the Woodruff key on the primary drive, which meant nothing was happening. So uh, he pulled off at the line, unfortunately. Watching him just go down right at the very back there. Too far, too far away for me to be able to tell who's uh, who's who. Well, I'll tell Harry, I guess. Cause only PK, only standard PK out there. Vespa's not very well represented uh, today, just uh, him and John uh, out in the specials and me and Harry out in uh, standards. Uh, Max, where he crashed earlier on, uh, on his special small frame, has uh, bruised his ribs a little bit and it's quite hard work for him. So he's just racing the zip. And here we go with Dalt. Oh, Darren has been pulled back. A little mistake from Darren at the bottom of the hill there, he had a wobble. Mikey, I think, has sensed that, is uh, definitely on. Let's see what's happening behind him. OK, Justin Price, Steve Wright, uh, Graham Tatton, possibly, and then John. Graham's on fire on this one. John, John's looking a little bit unnecessary. But it's all to play for at the moment. They're still very much within uh, fighting distance. I expect some of the changes. Uh, Steve Keneally and Hammy. And then an enormous gap. These guys have really pulled it out. Uh, Darren just nips past in the background there. Uh, pulled it by Mikey. Mikey, of course, has got a slightly more powerful bike and he's pulling him in on the straights. Um, Steve, uh, sorry, Darren very rarely makes a mistake uh, on the corners. The uh, little front end he had down at the bottom of the mountain is uh, unusual. Uh, Justin Offerland seems to have settled back here a little bit. Uh, that was
for Simon Palmer in his orange vest. Happy to see that. And, uh, Paul Fitzgerald, of course, there. Uh, Phil Hallam on the 50. I don't know who's on the 83, though. I should do, but their name's not down on my list. Harry coming past. The uh, little proddy um, PKs are putting out uh, around the 20 horsepower mark and on such a large circuit down the back, uh, down the start finish straight, you've got a long, long time where uh, engine power helps, which is what Mikey's finding out uh, as he tries to catch Darren. You'll see there the gap's closed up as Darren and Mikey come back round. Darren made another prop, two mistakes on the two corners. Darren's feeling the pressure. Mikey's, Mikey can smell blood, this is for certain. Mikey hasn't, doesn't look like he's made any mistakes yet. He can see that he can pull, he knows he can pull Darren in. Uh, and we've got John now put in third place. He's overtaken the three in front of him. Something must have gone. Something must have gone on around the back, which we haven't seen. Uh, John the Greek is very much lacking in uh, top end speed with, compared to the Lambrettas. Uh, I should have geared him quite a lot higher by the looks of it. He's at flat out as he's going down the hill, only about a quarter of the way down the straight. Um, and then again, we're into this gap that the front guys have opened up. Uh, in a second, we'll have the front guys going back down the uh, straight. You can just see them through the gap. Um, that's John now in third place. Mikey and uh, Darren have gone through already. It's a long way back, actually, towards uh, Justin and Steve Wright. Uh, for John's sake, I hope Justin and Steve beat each other up and uh, allow John, uh, John to get away. I think he'd quite like another third place. Uh, with a bit of clear track in front of him, he may be able to settle in to get a rhythm going on. Sean Nichols and Nick Pass there, leading Justin. Simon Palmer coming round. Uh, you, you can see the difference in speed there, perhaps between you know, the, the top four or five lads coming through that. The S's at the bottom of the hill there. Um, they are. There's a good 10, 15 mile an hour speed difference. It's uh, very scary at the bottom down there. It's very sharp. You arrive at it very quickly. Uh, yeah. We should see. Uh, so who have we got? We've got Darren, a uh, big gap. Mikey's made a mistake. Big gap. Mikey's gone. We've got no Mikey. Oh, that's a shame. I hope Mikey hasn't been there. Oh, well. Oh, okay, Mikey didn't come out come out down the back, so uh, I've just been told by John of Giles Speed. We've now got John the Greek coming through. Over the mountain, he'll be a little bit leery as per normal. Justin and Steve killing each other. Let's see what they're doing at this complex. No, they've gone through very clean. Graham Tatton uh, just hoping that the two of them make a mistake and he can pick up the debris. Uh, and then Steve and Hammy still fighting each other. Bit of a fag paper between them here. The autos, of course, always in the power. Variators take care of everything, so no gear changes, no mess messing around. And uh, John's got second, uh, then we're followed by Justin and uh, Steve, with obviously Darren taking the win. Again, I'll stay here and watch them fill their off. Uh, commiserations to Mikey, I, I, I really hope if he has come off, it's just a, a silly low side from pushing too hard. Uh, and we hope, of course, that he's uh, not hurt himself. Commiserations to JB Tuning there. He was definitely reeling Darren in, and I could see Darren beginning to make a couple of little errors at the bottom, which is quite unusual. Bit of a fight there with uh, Justin on the last lap, and Sean. I think someone wants it. Simon, Bob, guys coming around the back on their last lap. Phil Hallam has gone past there. Red flag's now out. Phil was the last guy through. Um, Harry was lapped, of course, so he's going to uh, follow Darren back in. Here comes Darren. 
Not the rival, you wave at the crowd. Thanks for the support, guys. It's always nice when the people cheer for you, it's great. Well done, mate. Lovely. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Long old gap there. Shows you just how far in front he was when he gets some clear track and uh, he can really put his head down and do some good times. Interesting, I haven't seen John come round. I knew he made for the uh, start finish. I wonder if he's broken down on the wind up. Oh no, there he is. I think I'll be cleaning a carb out in a, in a minute to, to uh, deal with this sucky, sticky float chamber. Harry coming off, Graham Tatton. John the Greek. Justin Price holding, <laughs> holding something. <laughs> I don't know what fell off his bike there, but he's obviously brought that back. Mikey, the bike's still running. I'm suspecting that was a little low side then. That's that's at least a relief. Live to fight another race. Uh, of course, which we've got another race later on. Um, we've got the Sanders race probably in about uh, an hour. Stock, scooters, as it should be called. And then uh, um, the last race for us will be the the second specials race, or the third specials race of today anyway, the second one for su technically for Sunday. Um, gentlemen, I shall, ladies, I shall catch up with you all uh, at the next special race. You'll have the pleasure of Mikey again and his infinitely more uh, attractive visage at the, uh, for the next stop race. Cheers!